what if I tell you there are only five positions, five fingerings that you really need to know to feel very free with guitar. All right, so check this out. If you think about these artists, or this one, all these guys are amazingly fluent on a guitar, but there's one thing that they're doing that is really, really effective, and I'm gonna show you exactly what it is. Just dive in. The thing all masters of guitar do is they dive deep into the information. They really, really know what they're dealing with. That means that if they're dealing with pentatonic, for example, let's take this F center, F minor, or even F minor pentatonic, and these artists that we're talking about will dive deep into information and will see it in two main ways. One, very systematic in an area, and the other one, basically spread out on the guitar. Now the key thing to do it is two things, and I'm going to show you exactly how I practice it. The first step is understanding the pure fingerings and the motoric of the thing. So for that, this is kind of section one of this video, we'll do the following. Oh, let's make it a 10 day guitar challenge where we actually practice every day this, this thing and make it really tight. I'm gonna play a little backing track and I'm gonna start with one position and talk it through until I cross the whole five position. I'll show you the fingerings, I'll talk about how I'm thinking about it and if you do it every day, you will be able to do that way, way more easily. Losing F, here. Follow me. Focus. Change your subdivision. I'll skip forward a little bit. Now you want to stay here. What I'm saying is, when I mean stay here is, I mean you don't want to just kind of be able to play it once. Now the tempo doesn't matter. What matters is the flow. A lot of times people are not really strict when they're practicing the elements and what I'm saying is try to take each one of these elements, chord notes, 8 notes, triplets, 16, 6 toplets, whatever you want. It could be slow, it could be fast, but what's important here is to be able to succeed many times, even if it's faster, for example, and so on and so forth. The point is to try to bring this element to a place of control and uh, some sort of flow, which oftentimes people are saying like, oh, I can play, they play it once and they're like, okay, I'm done. No, no, no. We really need to push it way, way above. I took a lesson with this guitar player. Pretty amazing. And one of the things, the interesting things that he told me was that you need to bring the classical piece or the element that you're practicing basically 150% more than you're actually gonna play it in the gig. So the gig is 100% of, of how the piece should sound, okay? That's the speed that it needs to be. But when you're practicing and shedding, you need to have a kind of a high ceiling above your head, otherwise it's not gonna feel comfortable at all. So this idea is, again, I know you know this position, I know you've seen it, I know you can play it, but there's a huge difference between really feeling comfortable, really knowing each one of the notes and, and being able to articulate in a clear way between that and what uh, probably a lot of you are doing now. And I'm saying it because I was the same. I did the same thing, I was like, oh, I know it's pentatonic, five notes, whatever. No, it's not whatever. It's amazing five notes, it's very important, and it's important to understand how to work with this. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this other position, but I'm going, con I'm going to connect these two positions. So first thing, just this position, and then connecting both. Check this out. I'll kind of speed it up, but when you're practicing it, please, Play it slower. By the way, this video is sponsored by Neural DSP. I use their plugin all the time. I think it sounds awesome. It's amazing, really easy to use. And actually you can get all the sounds in the world in one kind of tool bag, which I found amazing. Um, I'm using it on this video and actually on most of my videos. So you can check it out. So, the other position.
I'm using hammer on tool off. You don't have to push it too crazy fast. Maybe even here. between these two as if it's one next here oh, to warm up etc so what I'm going to do is like literally work on these each each one of these positions until they're extremely clear so I can do these ideas with much more ease because they're in my fingers and I hear how let's have a close look over this position here so this is the fingering that I'm using but it's very important for me to see this F and this F and have them sort of an anchor point because I'm listening to everything here from the point of view of this F. So that means that this is my A flat, this is my B flat, this is my C, this is the one, flat three, four, five. And I keep thinking about this relationship between these notes, because if I don't think about it, I'm missing a huge emotional power on this process of music, right? So it's very important for me to see it to hear it from that point of view. Now the same thing, I'm going to play it one more time and then I'm gonna mix these first three positions with a subdivision, then change the subdivision and move be in between them. Three positions. Now you can shift between them at will. Try to know the notes. C, B flat, A flat, F. So, the idea of understanding and knowing what you're doing is really important and helpful. If you have a guitar, join me. If you don't, it's so sad. Et cetera, et cetera. The point is to get comfortable with a different subdivision and being able to move and shift between these sounds because in real life, when you're improvising, you just want to imagine that sound and, and have it comfortably available. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges and this is one of the places that a lot of people fall because basically what happens is you know the positions, I know you know it, but you don't really know it well enough. You don't really hear the subdivision, you don't really clearly see the notes articulated and you know if you want to kind of go to the next step, go to the next level, I'm encouraging you in these 10 days just dive in full in with those five positions will allow so much more freedom. We have two more positions we need to do, which is this one here and this one here. At the end of the day, you'll have this collage or basically, you know, this F minor pentatonic sound is all across the guitar. This is a really, really, really helpful exercise and way to improvise. And it's sort of between improvisation and an exercise because we're just working on a subdivision, but then very short, shortly, we will take that into solo. Now there's one more exercise that I find extremely helpful in this process and it's this one. Just having the center, just kind of this F sound, and I'm going to play notes kind of in time, but I'm going to jump between the areas to try and challenge myself to see the notes all across the guitar. And you can make a mistake, it's totally fine, but I want you to try and see the colors that sound. 
sort of like exploration in a musical way, but not detached, or I would say detached from positions almost. This is the exercise of breaking the patterns in a way of position, so I can see and jumps. You can make it even slower or, you know, more expressive. And of course, if you want, you can do the same idea in time, for example. just trying to challenge myself to hear it and to see it slowly but surely on the floor. And I'm trying to kind of break through from the position so it's not just it's not just that it's more So I'm trying to do these jumps and I'm trying to do these sounds. Now, you can find whatever way or whatever tempo that works for you. It could be slow, it could be... The idea here is breaking the positions of the F minor pentatonic and seeing the guitar as one kind of unit. Now, these both, both of these exercises, the, the, the really meticulous, you know, playing of the positions and, and really, but really zooming in into one subdivision until it's clear and from the other side, like taking this liberty of just trying to see the board and trying to choose notes, they're both very important because they're both highlighting the guitar in a different way and the idea is that we need to find the colors and connect to them, both emotionally, both physically, knowing where they are, and also, um, you know, soundly. <laughs> like hearing it and saying, ah, oh, this is the sound that I want to hear. And I'm choosing one of these five colors every time. Five notes, penta, five. But it's such a deep sound. It's so beautiful. So if we actually, you know, want to take our playing to this other level of, of uh, you know, proficient, proficiency. <laughs> I think diving into this and making ourselves like a little challenge of 10 days is a really, really cool thing. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and interesting and fun. I'll see you very soon. Try not to kill anybody. Please spread love and peace around you and I'll see you soon. Peace. Thank you.